A couple of leakers are saying that Hi-Fi Rush, the critically acclaimed, award-nominated game from Tango Gameworks, an Xbox exclusive, is coming to a competing platform. And this begs the question, is Xbox going third party? Recent rumors were spilling out from Nate the Hate and other trusted influencers and leakers across different website forums, and they are talking about the possibility of a critically acclaimed game from Xbox, a former exclusive going multi-platform. It was alluded that this game would come to the Nintendo Switch. Many assumed, even me, that this game would also come to PlayStation. It is pretty much being spelled out that it'll be announced soon that Hi-Fi Rush Tango Gameworks rhythm-based arcade game is coming to the Nintendo Switch. This begs the question whether Xbox truly will have exclusives going forward in this console generation. They've been ambiguous and been everything but clear about how they will treat their games from their first party studios or the games they partner with in global publishing that are becoming first party games that are exclusive to Xbox, PC, and Game Pass. During the court fight for the Activision Blizzard deal that went on during the middle of 2023, a graphic was shown which I am calling an exclusive gradient graph, which shows on the far left that Xbox considers smaller games to be niche and for a niche audience and not really conducive or important to be exclusive. And then in the middle, you have uncertain new IPs that they will have exclusive. And then on the far right, they have the games that are just so big, they have to be everywhere like Call of Duty and Minecraft. Now, looking at the middle, you see games like Redfall and Starfield. At the time, the Xbox was not sure where these games are going to land, so they thought of them as big tentpole games. But over here, you have Minecraft and Call of Duty, which were supposed to be multi-platform from the very start. Over here, you have Psychonauts 2 and Fallout 76. Now. Both of those were already always going to be multi-platform due to the contractual obligations of Psychonauts 2. They were acquired, Double Fine came to Xbox, and Psychonauts 2 has been a multi-platform because that's the deal that was in agreement with the original publishing deal and it was under crowdfunding before. That's kind of convoluted. But Fallout 76 was always a multi-platform game launched in 2019, I think it was, and that game was made as a multi-platform team before the Bethesda Studios was acquired and brought into Xbox. So saying that those are niche games that are multi-platform is kind of not really painting the true picture of what Xbox thinks of for this exclusive gradient graphic. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this is because the issue of saying a game is too big or too amazing to remain exclusive to the Xbox in the middle part of the gradient, Nate the Hate talked in his podcast at length about how Xbox probably, and he's assuming, has this strategy where they can just bring out a new IP, like something like Starfield or something like Contraband or Avowed and bring out these games and say, let's see how they do exclusively on Xbox, PC and Game Pass first. And then, <laughs> this is the weirdest part, he's saying that he thinks that Microsoft is thinking if the game doesn't do well over here, like if it's niche or, you know, since it's single player and it doesn't sell a lot, that they'll bring it to other platforms later. But if the game does really, really well and is really super successful, they'll think about either making it timed exclusive and eventually bring it to the Nintendo Switch, Switch 2, or the PS5. Now, the problem with that thinking, which I don't agree with Nate the Hate on this, he's He's saying that this is their strategy. His strategy basically means if Xbox puts out a middle of the road game and, and Avowed could really be that, it'll score pretty high uh, according to their track record and it'll sell oh, pretty well, okay? So if Avowed is like a middle of the ground great game and doesn't like blow everyone away and it doesn't become a niche game that no one plays, Xbox will keep it exclusive. None of this logically makes sense business-wise where Xbox has every motivation to make all of their games, whether they're small or whether they're big, to be exclusive to Xbox consoles, PC on Steam and Windows Xbox app, and then on Game Pass. Like this is what you wanna do. If Avowed is middle of the road or if Avowed is really good, 
Avowed will bring in subscribers to Game Pass for the entirety of the year. And of course, Microsoft can say after that, let's think about bringing those games to another platform. Maybe the Nintendo Switch 2 can run these games. Now, of course, I'll put in my personal opinion where me as somebody who talks about the Xbox platform, I tell people play on PC, play on Xbox, Game Pass, play on a console, play on the cloud if you want. But, you know, Xbox wants you in the ecosystem. That money funnels back in so they can make more games or acquire more partnerships to make more games that are available to you, the customer you're going to have an increase of sales. If Avowed sells 2 million copies of the game across PC and Xbox, even though it's in Game Pass, uh, if you bring it onto PlayStation 5 a year later, you can guarantee you'll get another 1 million sales for an older game because it's on another platform and a bigger platform. It brings this problem with fans and especially the media, which is Xbox's new game, like Blade, going to be exclusive. Are they going to keep this game on the Xbox or are they eventually, because it's Marvel and it's a Marvel character, <laughs> are they going to bring that to the PlayStation console? Like it can't miss one of those big platforms. And so you have the media who are very dubious. They don't know if Xbox is going to keep true exclusivity. Even Phil Spencer saying we want our games exclusive to where Game Pass exists. If we're an Xbox customer, the thing I want you to know is this is about delivering great exclusive games for you that ship on platforms where Game Pass exists. But then they have zero clarity when they reveal a new game, especially this console generation past 2020. Whenever a game is announced or one that has been announced throughout this generation, I think a majority of the fans that are really interested in knowing where they should play, they're wondering, is this game going to be exclusive to Xbox or can I just wait and play it on my PlayStation 5 or Nintendo Switch? And that's a problem that Xbox has with their marketing team. And I think the problem is real because I honestly think they don't know exactly what they want to do. They haven't fully committed to an exclusivity model. So the future for consoles and exclusivity could be completely changed as we get into the end of the 2020s. And I'd say by the 2030s, there would be a major question mark over everyone's heads. And in the industry, PlayStation and Xbox may be in the exact same boat when it comes to exclusive first party content. In fact, in the 2030s, which is a long time from now, if you're young, the Exclusives could be completely done away with where everybody wants you to buy on their ecosystem. If you want to play the next God of War, Ratchet and Clank, Uncharted or Naughty Dog game or whatever comes out on PlayStation, you have to buy it from them in their store ecosystem on PC, cloud, on your older console or on a smart TV. And it'll become a platform war of who makes the best games. But in the end, as a gaming industry, it would probably be for all the better. The problem is for 40 to 50 years, we've been ingrained in this understanding that I bought this one plastic box and it can only play the games that I get. You can't have them because I bought the gray one and you bought the black one. So this is a total different paradigm shift that we may see coming. It'll just be a very difficult thing to deal with as we see games no longer protected under a logo where only I get to play the next Forza Horizon game or the next God of War game. And that is something I don't think any of us are truly ready for. This is Cold Eastwood. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I haven't made a lot of these videos like this in a long time. I turned on the light and I just started talking, but everyone's been talking about the third party problem, the ambiguity of Xbox, where when they announce the game, it's like, well, what's going to happen? And I know the diehard fans, we're all diehard fans of our favorite platform. And we all probably assume, yeah, that game or this game, Blade's going to be exclusive. Uh, Elder Scrolls Six is going to be exclusive. There's a new Fallout game. It won't come to PlayStation, right? We all think that, but as an Xbox fan or an Xbox uh, customer, that question mark has been a plaguing problem for a long time. And I think until Xbox decides that they're just going to really nail down their clarity and their messaging and their communication for what their games are going to be, we're going to have to always wonder if we get Blade, it'll be great, but when? 
is it coming to the competing platform? If you end up enjoying this video, let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell to be notified of new weekly content. And if you want to further support the work we do here on the Colt Eastwood channel, uh, you can do that by joining the channel membership or the Patreon. And both of those get you into early access for videos some 10 to 12 hours before they go up. And it also gets you into the merch entered into merch giveaway. Sorry about that. And uh, also, uh, there's all there's all kinds of other things that we do on the Patreon. But thank you for checking out everything in the podcast. I want to know what you think about the third party thing. Um, what do you think Xbox is going to do beyond Hi-Fi Rush? I got to hear your opinion in the comment section. And while you're there, please, as I always say, be nice. <laughs>